I'm not gonna hold you. I just wanted to do a quick book review on Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath. It's an excellent read. Definitely uh, recommend it. Just want to go over a couple of the uh, stories and scenarios that jumped out at me that I thought were worth sharing. Um, the the biggest story of the book is the title itself, uh, talking about David and Goliath. It's basically a book about discovering your weak weaknesses and discovering your strengths, and then how to position those weaknesses uh, so that you can compete. Um, so the biggest one, the biggest story was David and Goliath. So traditionally, we've heard about the story of Goliath uh, being this mythical creature, very dominating. Uh, everybody was afraid of him, and he was at a huge advantage over over David. Well, after reading the book, Malcolm Gladwell poses the point of saying there were three types of, of fighting back in those days. There was hand to hand comeback, which was Goliath. Uh, there was uh, uh, the horses. Uh, and then there was also David. And so David was a, a slingshot user. But now David was very proficient with his slingshot. Um, and so he had been using that to fight lions and bears as well to protect his uh, his flock. And so he knew what he was doing with the slingshot. Now, Malcolm Gladwell compares the slingshot to a pistol with that projectile and um, the ability to use it far away from the target. He compares it to a pistol. And so he's like, it's basically like bringing a pistol to a, uh, a fist fight. Anytime you bring a pistol to a fist fight, the person with the pistol should always win. It's like trying to fight Mike Tyson. Now, if you are 100 feet away from Mike Tyson and you know how to use the pistol, you should beat Mike Tyson. But if you get a little closer to Mike Tyson, then it's altogether a different story. So it really just made me think about how we view Goliath as having the advantage when really David had the advantage all along. And David broke the rules, the protocol to the type of fighting that was supposed to take place. So David, in essence, brought a pistol to a, a fist fight. Um, and so if we saw that happen today, somebody bringing a pistol to a fist fight, there is no way that we would think the person that, that was not armed could win that. Uh, so it's just a matter of figuring out your weaknesses, taking advantage of those uh, those uh, weaknesses of the other party and being able to leverage yourself. Another good story was from um, a basketball coach named Vivek Ramadivi. And he was uh, coaching girls at uh, Redwood High School. Uh, and so basically they were, uh, they were playing, they were playing uh, basketball and the girls weren't especially talented. So he figured, the coach figured that if he was going, his girls were going to win, they were going to have to defend the whole court. Typically in basketball, we just defend like the last 30 feet uh, to make sure that the, uh, the opposing team doesn't score. Well, Vivek decided he was going to defend the whole court uh, because he was a, a cricket player. And so, which makes sense because in football, you defend the whole field. You just don't defend the red zone. You make a march all the way down the field the same way um, that Vivek was doing that in basketball. He was making him bring the ball down the entire court, making him fight the whole way. So it's, it's a really efficient uh, prog process, but a lot of times we don't do that in basketball. But it definitely made a lot of sense, and it took them to the championship. Um, a couple of scenarios that Malcolm Gladwell brings up is – Big schools versus little schools and big ponds versus small ponds. When we think about people going to big schools, we think of the bigger the school, the more notoriety, the, the higher chances of succeeding are. Well, that's not always the case, Malcolm Gladwell argues, because sometimes you might go to a really big school with a lot of talented individuals, a lot of really smart folks that might even be smarter than yourself. And so that might discourage you or dissuade you from continuing your studies in that field of choice. Uh, whereas if you go to a smaller school, they might nurture you more and they might encourage you to go ahead and pursue uh, the degree that you have in mind. So that was a really good point. Uh, same way with big ponds. You go into a, a big pond, even though you're good, if you're in a big pond, that might discourage you and might it might force you to think you aren't as good as you think you are. Where if you're in a smaller pond where they nurture you more, um, then that, should, that might encourage you to c continue on. Another scenario was um, surviving situations. So it's like the story of um, the two the two sons of the drunk of the drunk man of the alcoholic. One son was sober, and he said he was sober because he had seen his daddy drinking his whole life, and he didn't want to be like that. The other son was also an alcoholic, and he said the reason he was an alcoholic is because he had seen his dad uh, was an alcoholic, and he wanted to be just like his dad. So it's really it's not always about the situation; it's how you react to the situation and how you let that situation impact you. 
and whether or not you can figure out your weaknesses and your strengths and be able to adjust accordingly. Another uh, situation, scenario that he talked about was um, overcoming a really bad situation. So he talked about um, a place where um, they were going, it was a war-torn place where they were going through bombs and they would get bombed often. And after a person had been bombed and they survived a bomb, they would get this bravery because they figured out if they could survive a bomb, they could survive anything. So Malcolm Gladwell suggested if you can survive a hardship, then that gives you extra courage and fortitude to know that, you know, nothing can stop you. It's like doing an ice bath. I don't know about you, but once I do an ice bath, I feel like looking at the rest of the day is down here because if I can endure ice bath, I can endure anything. So it talks about if when you have those challenges, if you allow them to be framed correctly, you can use that uh, as fortitude for all your other tasks and projects. Um, he also gave two solutions for when you figure out that you have a weakness in a situation, how to turn that weakness into a strength. One solution was niching, being able to niche. So Malcolm Gladwell suggests uh, if you can figure out, you might not be able to outperform a bigger company in their in the, the entire United States. But if you can just figure out a niche, maybe you can outperform them in a city, in your home city. Or maybe you I might be able to perform them in a specific type of task. Uh, he talks about really being proficient within that niche um, so you can call room for yourself. And the um, other solution he talked about is breaking the rules. He said trails, trailblazers, trailblazers always have to break the rules because you have to have a, a either a rule breaking paradigm or you have to see things differently. And then you have to think differently and be crazy enough to think that you can win. I call it delusional optimism. You have to see things differently than the norm if you're going to come into uh, a dominant situation with a weakness and be able to win. So that's my scenario. Those are my summaries of Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath. Thanks for listening. Hope to catch you next time.